Well, before we get started on this week's um, Monday video, let's thank some people for their comments. Uh, Carol told me she has a two and a half year old Shih Tzu. Uh, Miss Angel is the name of that dog. Stephanie, Steph B Studio, she has a cockatiel and loved my big feathers and um, so did Amy. She liked the big uh, feathers. Lynn is from Australia and my friend Teresa is leaving Yuma and heading back to cooler weather. So before we get started on this video, you guys know usually when I am doing a video, I edit out mistakes. Or maybe you didn't know that, but I do. And this time I didn't because I wanted to show you how I fix those mistakes. So stay tuned and let's get started on these journals. So you know how in my last video I had constructed the journal cover for this tall French journal. And so I started pulling papers out for it and I realized that I have a lot of paper, <laughs> a lot of digitals from Rachel's kit, her French Chateau kit, and Medieval Mirage's French Rococo Rhapsody Marie Antoinette and Ladies Kit. And I thought to myself, okay, maybe I need to make another journal, a second journal. So this is what I've done. So I'm going to put this off to the side. And I constructed another journal cover. And this is a hard backed one with a solid spine. I believe the spine is two inches. And I was short on fabric. I only had this much fabric, but I like the fabric. Looks very French to me. But my problem is this edge. So I thought, well, let me bring you along to see what we can do to fix this. So I thought, okay, maybe some lace. Let's just grab some lace. And I pulled off a bit of lace and I laid it here. And yes, it covers it. I'm going to hold it up. But to me, you can still see a little bit of that background, that, that, the, chipboard and I don't like that it, it bugs me so I thought okay now what do I do to cover it before I put the lace on so I went digging through my box of ivory laces and fabrics and what have you and I came across this quilt binding tape. I don't know how old it is, but I thought, oh, it's already double folded. And I think that's going to work. So let's just first put it on the front. And I'm going to just bring it down like this. And I'm going to glue it there. It will cover this side beautifully. And on the inside, what I did is I put some uh, William Morris paper here and marble paper here. And I'm going to do a hidden spine. Of course, there'll be some pockets here, here and some decoration. So what I'm going to do is just glue this down. 
Do you see how it's got the fold? I'm going to leave it folded so that the glue will absorb and I'm going to glue it down and I'll be back with you guys to show you how it looks. So I thought I would show you what I'm doing. So I'm butting the binding tape, yeah, the quilt binding tape, right up against the, <coughs> excuse me, the edge of the journal. And I'm going to bring it in just a little bit more. I think I need to even push this back here. There we go. Okay. And because I want it to be evenly distributed, even though I am going to be putting some lace over it. Okay. So let's just add some Fabri-Tac glue here to the end. I'm not going to cut it yet because I'm going to have to trim it off both at the top and the bottom. And it doesn't quite matter. I don't think that the Fabri-Tac may seep through because like I said, I'm going to add some lace over it as a decorative element. So we're just going to bring that over. It's mainly just to cover where I didn't have enough fabric. And I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Okay, that is done. And it did make it look a little bit neater on that side. And what I can always do is add some book corners here to hide that that's kind of just sticking up there. But what I thought I would do next is put the lace on the center here and see what this looks like first. And thank goodness I still have some of this lace left over. I wish I could remember where I got it. I need to probably head over to Joanne's and take a look and see if that's where I got it. But I do love the way this looks also, uh, just like the other uh, journal cover. That, that looks very, very nice. So I'm going to glue this down. I think I told you guys what I do is I take just a tiny little bit of glue and I add it where there's a lot of stitching. I don't add it here in the um, like tool area, but I will also add glue along the edge. Well, actually, I didn't add glue along the edge here yet because I thought I might tuck something in there. So I probably won't do it on the edge of this one too. I'll just put it down the center. So let me do that and I'll be back with you guys. So as I was thinking about putting the lace here, just like I had done the other one, I thought, no, that's a little bit too much. I just, something about it just did not, you know, sit well with me. So I pulled it away. I grabbed this little bit of lace and I thought, well, let me put this here first and, you know, decorate that edge up a little bit so it's not quite so plain and then come back and think about what I want to do next. It's all a process. It's all trial and error and, you know, thinking about it and like, what, what do I want to do? I just picked this up. Is that too much? Ooh, no, it's not. I kind of like that. Ooh, we're going to have to think about that. Yeah, that's a possibility just to kind of break that up a little bit. But let me get this down because I know I do want to cover up the binding here. Well, you guys, I was having a pickle of a time with this 
journal cover. So one thing is this here, do you see how that right there is where it should have ended on this piece here? But what I was finding is when you looked at this, this was too far down. And I kept thinking, how can I fold that and get that end so it's even? And then it just looked too clunky and bulky. My second problem was I grabbed my sheets from the other journal. And say, for instance, if we had this here previously, and I stuck even my biggest papers in here. Look at, okay, they're up against the spine. Look at how much room I have here. It just didn't look quite right. And then these are the digitals. So you add those in there and it's way off. So I decided to, one way to remedy that, and I do, like it much better is I cut off both edges of the journal and so now when I put my pages in they're going to fit nicer it's going to look a little bit better um, so now my dilemma is back to this now, because the I cut this previously, remember some of the chipboard was showing on the outside, but once I trimmed it, all that's showing is here. That's it. There's a couple of things I could do. I could paint it. Now, see again, this is kind of bugging me. See how that kind of... That... Here's a gap there. It needs to be flush up against there, but then I, I, uh, well, that's not too bad of a wrinkle. I'm going to work on that. If you guys can see that, I'm sorry I had it out of frame, but I'm a little bit better, more pleased with it now. And so I'm going to decide. Shall I just run some paint here? Mm, I don't know. Or, or just lace. And that's it. And not that binding. Again, oh, and by the way, it's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up and... <laughs> I woke up at two and I don't know, I started thinking about this and I thought, well, it is Saturday and my son doesn't have to work, so I might as well just get up and and uh, come work on this and see what I can figure out. So once I figure some stuff out, I'll let you guys know. So what I did to fix that little area there, I just put a little bit of glue in between there and pulled it over and you can hardly see it, so I'm pleased with that. You know, what I ended up doing is I took some velvet ribbon, and it looks like I'm going to have to order some more, but I ended up putting it on the edges like I did pages of my last journal. And as I was looking at what to add to this journal, just to give it a little more oomph, I kept going back to this, which is the same lace that was here. But I kept looking at it and thinking, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I realized the reason is, is this cover is a little bit on the lighter side. It goes well with this because it was light. It didn't seem to go well with this cover. So I ended up going through my box of gold trims and I pulled this out and I added it to the top 
and I do like that a lot, a lot better. So I'm not sure if I'm completely done with the front, but I'm gonna leave it like it is right now and finish getting it together so I can add my pages to it. So now we're gonna go back to the soft cover journal. And what I've done is I went ahead and put together the papers that I want for that journal. And this is the tool I use and I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. It was made in Holland. That is the name of it. I ordered it from a book binding store in New York and it is fantastic. And what I do is I mark with purple tape where I want my holes for this journal. So you take your paper, I've done it like we always do with every journal. I've budding up, budded them up together to form a little um, groove in there. You lay your paper inside of the cradle, then you lay this over the top of it and I push it up close and push it way down. And then I hold it there and I make sure it's in a good position. And then I just take the awl and I press it down a couple of times right where I have that tape. And because there's several pages, this is one big signature. I'm putting my all in there a couple of times. So let's go down one more time in this side. And I'm real careful not to move this part. Okay, let's go up here. And then one more up here. And then I can also see how that's right perfectly in between. Then I can even pull it out and then go in with my awl one more time and go all the way down to make that hole just a little bit bigger. And you guys know, you've heard me say many times before, I like the five hole pamphlet stitch, especially for a journal like this that is a little bit taller. I think you're going to get a stronger um, stronger um, stronger area on your signatures because there's five different places. You see where I'm just going in there, making that a little bit bigger. And then my last one here. And I really want that hole to be able to fit my needle. So then what I can do is set that aside, bring in my cover set it in exactly the same spot. This I know is the top where that line is. I put it in there, bring that all the way in, press it down hard and just, it's a little bit easier because it's not so many papers here. And I will do this twice on each hole. And since that other journal is about the same height, 
I will do the same hole marks for that journal. And recently, I think my friend Rachel over at Roxy Creations was talking about this tool. She was saying how I had a really nice thing for making holes. And I thought she was talking about my, my Cropodile Big Bite. She wasn't. She, she was talking about this little thing. Look in Europe, Rachel. I'm sure you can be able to get it. Alrighty. So now I've shown you many times how I do my five hole pamphlet stitch. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and then I'll be back with you guys because you've seen me do that many times. Okay, my signatures are sewn into the cover and I do want to show you this. You know how a lot of us sometimes say, be careful when you're coming up with your needle that you can split your thread. I did that, but what I always do is just take another needle and very carefully go under and unsplit it. Sometimes you can do that but sometimes you can't. I was able to do it this time, uh, but it did leave that one small area. And thank goodness it was in a place that I would cut it off and I, I was able to cut that off. So anyway, and my strings are long enough to where I can dangle something if I want to from it. Now, if you want to have your strings tied on the inside, you start on the inside. If you want your strings to be on the outside, you start on the outside and go in. So let's just real quick do a flip through of this journal of what I've done, I've done with the pages and then next will be um, sewing in the signatures on the other journal and then decorating. So I did this. I think I mentioned that I got this idea from Rachel at Roxy Creations where she hinged a large pocket onto a page and this was part of a journal. And then this page here is a nice big page from a French cookbook. As a matter of fact, when I get over to the other page, I'll do a little explanation. This is that paper that I coffee dyed myself. This is some paper that I got from Patty Lang over at Sacred Mementos. This is again part of Medieval Mirage's kit. This is from uh, a French embroidery book. This is part of Rachel's uh, French Chateau kit. And that is the center of it. And then as I turn it over, then it's the other side of the pages. But once I get to here, let me get there. I'm going to tell you about this page here. And this is going to be in my Quick Tip Thursday where I talk about how to dismantle a book. And this is a brand new cookbook from, I think, 18... 1878 that I dismantled. Oh, I love that paper. I love that book. And then this is the end of that journal. So next we will be decorating this journal. So what I'm going to do is set this over the, to the side, put it, some papers on it or something heavy so that it can, Fiona, so that it can flatten out. Okay, now we're going to work on this hardcover journal. 
what I've done is, remember I told you what I was going to do is a hidden spine. So all my papers will be sewn in here and then this will be attached to the spine here. What I do is I take some graph paper, it's from Amazon, and there are 12 little squares there. So that's going to help me determine how many signatures I want for this book. So now let's start putting our pages together. And what I've decided, so this grid line has 12 different little squares. And so every two squares is a place where I can hold a signature. So there are five places to hold a signature. So then that helps me decide I will do five signatures. Oh, and like I told you before, to prevent from having a big gator mouth of a journal, which I guess is okay, um, but I, I, I used to do that when I first started making journals, but I, I try not to do it now. I lay what papers I have picked out and I still make sure that I've got room to grow for pockets and adding ephemera and stuff like that. And I think I have more than enough room. So let me set this aside. And I have put my papers into a stack. So there's one, two, three four, five, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five kind of papers like this. Then one, two, three, four, five, about like that. Then I have five, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, how did I do that? Let me go backwards this way because I know there's one, two, three, four, those five similar to that, then one, two, three, four, five. And I determine these five because they're all even. And then the next, however many I did, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine. I need one more here. I believe so. Let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here I have, oh, I think this goes over there. That's right. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. And then five over here, one, two, three, four, five. And then, yeah, then there's, I think, 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And the reason I did these is I've kind of offset them. So I want to decide which page I'm going to have first here. And I want it to be a pretty uh, decorative page that will go similar to that cover. So I'm just going to kind of flip through them, see what I can find. I kind of want one that has um, you know, uh, um, more on this side. So let's see. And I want it to be a digital. I suppose it could be one of these. Yeah, let's just do one of these. So we'll start with this, one of these. And it doesn't really matter because they're all kind of blue. Let's just start with this one. It's pretty. So one of these. 
and then I'll start over here on this side and then we'll add this one And I like to bring it into, you know, that corner there, okay? And then, uh, let's see, let's do this one. And then we can do one of the uh, French ones with the, uh, the cooking ones. That's a pretty good size one that goes right in there. And then I've lost track of where I'm at. Uh, did I do one of those? Yeah, I must have. And then, oh, that's pretty. That looks good together. Okay. What did I decide then? There's 10 here. So one, two, three, four, five, Six. So six pages per signature, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, and then one more of these. And let's see, let's just do this one here. Six. It may get switched around, you never know, but that's where we're going to start. And I will just clip it. Well, it's not going to go. <laughs> I need to start at the top. So there we go there. Oh, wait a minute here. You know what? Look, I just noticed this is this is not right. This needs to be opened. I'm glad I caught that. Well, come on, you can open up. There we go, like that. Okay. Whew, that was close. That was a close call. Okay, there we go. And I have learned not to put my paper clips too far here because then it doesn't fit into that cradle. This one's loose. If I do it like that, it will be a little bit tighter. Yeah. Okay. Signature number one. And let's see, for signature number two, let's start with one of Rachel's. So we'll do this, then this pretty color. Actually, I like the blue better. Yeah. This, and then this. And then let's bring in one of these. Actually, let's do a big one. Yeah, one of this. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then this one. And then let's do a book page. And the book page I definitely want centered. 
so that it um, it catches when I sew. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I need one more of these decorative wands. Let's do... I want a pretty inside one where it's cut. cut there you go. That'll look good because it's decorated on the inside also. So that's that's a good signature. I'm trying not to bump my papers up against my chest because I have my microphone and uh, it makes a big loud for, noise for you guys if I bump it so. Okay, now Let's start off with one of these pages that are kind of uh, bigger. I'm going to hinge something on this. So we'll start off with this and then let's see. So that's got a little bit of color. Um, Oh, you know what? Let's do this one. This one is an embroidery, a uh, French embroidery page. So we'll do that. And then let's put this pretty lavender colored page in there. And then let's put... Um, This one here. So one, two, three, four. That's a good writing page in there. Four. I have two left of those. Oh, then it's got to be one of these. Uh, let's put one of these blue ones in here. Ooh, that would be a good center one. Let's save that for the last one. Um, I'm getting confused. <laughs> I had these all separated out. Now I'm getting confused. So how many more of these are left? Uh, okay, we can put one of these hinged ones here. Uh, it doesn't matter. Do that because we're going to be decorating them up. So one, two, three, four, five, and then, like I said, where was the one that had that pretty page? You're probably yelling at me. That one went at that one. Okay, there's six pages there. Oh, so something scary happened the other day when I went to go take Fiona on a walk. We were heading to the mailbox and she was on her leash and a person down the street had let their dog out without being on a leash. And it was a pit bull. Now, I know they have a bad reputation. Uh, I'm, I will give that uh, dog a uh, benefit of the doubt, that breed. However, that pit bull that was down the street 
was extremely aggressive, came running up to my sweet little Miss Fiona and was growling at her and trying to get at her. And so I was putting my body, and I know you're not supposed to do it, but you know, mama here wanting to protect her baby. Um, I was trying to put myself in between Fiona and uh, that other dog. And uh, so the guy, the owner, He's sauntering over. It was probably a block away, his house. And he's just sauntering over. And so I yelled at him, could you please hurry and come get your dog? And he says, well, I can't run because I have congestive heart failure. Well, and he wasn't that old. He was definitely a lot younger than me. And uh, I'll put a little pink here. And uh, he finally, and I, like I said, I kept putting myself in between Fiona and the big dog, the other dog. And uh, finally, he makes it over to um, put his dog on the leash. And uh, he did say, I'm sorry, but his wife came out on a scooter. And again, they definitely looked more like a lot younger than me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And um, I mean, you know, whatever. I don't mean to sound you know, nasty because she's on a scooter, but, you know, she obviously needed it. But um, she never said a word. She just came in by him and um, they, you know, he apologized, but uh, she never said a word to me. And I'm like, um, you know, sorry, lady, you probably should have apologized for letting your dog out without being on a leash. And I'm telling you, I was so scared, and little Miss Fiona was scared, and, you know, because he was growling at her and jumping on her and nipping at her neck. And then I thought, oh, my gosh, I hope this dog doesn't go crazy and attack, get you know, attack me, and then I get injured. I just thought, oh, my daughter said I should call animal control and turn them in, and... Uh, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, maybe it was an accident and they didn't mean it. So anyway, that scared me to death. Okay, this is our last page. And uh, ooh, we sure have a lot of brown here. Mm, so we can put this. I need some color here. Oh, we'll put color in with the... Uh, with the... Uh, the decorating of the pages. So let's do that. And then we'll do, a, this is, oh yeah, that's kind of pretty. That'll go there like that. And then we'll just put this plain journal page here. Yeah, we're gonna be doing a lot of decorating, so. And then that one there. And this one as the last one. Look at that journal page, all in French. What is the year? Not too old, 1922. So yeah, I may have to add something onto that. So that's my... Uh, that's my pages. Ooh, I'm so excited. So what I will do is I will sew these into the journal off camera. Cause like I said, you guys have seen me do that 
many, many times. And then in our next video, we will start decorating both of these journals. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. You're absolutely fantastic. You make you bring me so much joy with your comments and your support of my channel. And I will see you guys, um, well, Thursday for a quick tip Thursday. Thanks and bye-bye.